I continue to pray that your uh, life is going okay or even well during these challenging days that we find ourselves in. And uh, we pray that the COVID uh, crisis will end in the not too distant future. And that, uh, and also that our uh, political uh, powers and uh, all that's going on in our country will settle down as well. But in the meantime, uh, we're just called to pray and to be a positive witness during these challenging days. And today's Ash Wednesday, a great time to think about, reflect on our own lives and our own witness and our walk with the Lord and, uh, and, and also trying to stay close to him. That's really what Lent is about. It's calling us to return and to uh, really get our priorities in focus and to really seek to walk with him and to, and to reflect his love as well as his holiness in our lives and to be a witness to other people. Today's Ash Wednesday, as I record this, and uh, we've already had one service, we have two more to go, and it's really a blessed day as we kick off Lent and a blessed season where we prepare for Holy Week and for Easter. And with that in mind, I wanted to share with you what my sermon series is going to be during Lent. It's going to be entitled, Jesus, Servant, Savior, Sovereign. And uh, the series will begin this Sunday, the 21st of February, and go through Easter. And um, I'm anticipating a, a wonderful blessing for myself as I continue to prepare for this sermon series, but also for you, for our congregation, and maybe beyond, if you want to encourage others to, to look at the sermons, if you feel that they might be worthwhile for other people's lives as a testimony, a witness to draw them back to the Lord, uh, send them on uh, through Facebook or just a message, or encourage uh, other people to look at our website. Uh, because I'm praying that this sermon series really turns our hearts towards the Lord and towards each other, that our mindset would be one of a servant, where we seek to love the Lord and love others, and that we're willing to give of ourselves and, and sacrifice and, and really reflect the kind of love that Jesus had in his servant's heart, his servant's attitude, and to be a blessing to the Lord and to be a blessing to other people. And, uh, Along those lines, this coming Sunday, which is the first in the series, Meredith and I will be leaving after worship to go to be with our son and daughter-in-law and grandson, Simon, because uh, our daughter-in-law's due date, Natalie's due date, for our third grandson, their second child, is Sunday. And uh, she doesn't appear that she's going to be ready at that point, or at least that's what we were told this week. But two weeks ago, she said to us that She's already scheduled to be induced on Monday, the, the 22nd. And so regardless, she said, I want you to come. And, uh, and Meredith and I said, it would be our pleasure and privilege to come and to be with you and, and uh, Daniel, our son, and with Simon. In fact, she said to me, your main responsibility, Greg, is Simon while I'm in the hospital, uh, which I got a big kick out of. I think in some ways, um, I'm a playmate to him. So that works out really well for both of us. Uh, but he is exhausting. He has a tremendous amount of energy. He doesn't understand the word slow or still. Um, he is very, very active. And as a matter of fact, <clears throat> this past weekend, he has a buckle fracture in his wrist from being so active and rambunctious, uh, which interestingly enough, our son Daniel had five buckle fractures in uh, his growing up. And uh, uh, the orthopedic, we were afraid he was going to tell us that we were going to be uh, arrested for child abuse because he was just so active and rambunctious himself. And so Simon seems to be following in his footsteps. So uh, it's probably one of the reasons why Simon and I get along so well is because I'm used to uh, helping out with my son Daniel as he was growing up. And uh, I enjoyed uh, being a parent and I enjoy being a grandparent. And so I'm looking forward to being with Simon uh, during the time that Natalie and Daniel will be in the hospital and Meredith will be there to help as well. Meredith's going to do whatever she can and help, probably give me a little break from Simon now and then. Uh, but one of the things that we love to do is to help around the house, and, and we both love to cook, so we will probably prepare meals ahead for them uh, as they deal with this newborn and uh, a changing household and not getting as much sleep and having a lot of activity around the house, uh, particularly with Daniel being in graduate school, um, that we can be as much help as we can be. And that's the mindset that we're going with. And I'm, 
I'm, I'm sure that uh, thinking about and praying about the sermon series over the last few months has put me into that mind that we are going to serve. Yes, it, it'll be a break from uh, the normal routine of life, of being at our own home and doing our own thing, <clears throat> but it's not. Uh, we're not viewing it as a vacation. We're viewing it as we're going to help, we're going to serve, we're going to be whatever we need to be for them and do whatever we can for them as they go through this uh, new step in their life, uh, where they go from one child to two, where they go from uh, sleeping through the night to probably having interrupted sleep, as Daniel's in the midst of grad school and the challenges of that and uh, midterms the following week, that uh, this is a time when they're going to need support. So Meredith and I are driving after worship on Sunday, and then uh, during the week uh, we'll be there, and then uh, hopefully uh, Natalie will come home before I leave, because I'm leaving Friday to come back so I can continue on the sermon series. Uh, while I'm down there, I'm hoping to do staff meeting. We'll see how that plays out. I will be doing vestry meeting on Tuesday evening. Uh, Wednesday evening, I'm foregoing. Uh, there's no uh, uh, X Bible study on Wednesday evening. But I will be back on Friday to preach my second sermon in the sermon series on February 28th. And so um, Meredith, uh, however, we don't know what her schedule is going to be because once again, we offered. Uh, she said, I'll stay another week if you want me to, particularly since that's Daniel's midterm week. But Natalie and Daniel said, let us let us see how it's going. So we said, your decision. But uh, we're just trying to be available. And I believe that's what the Lord calls us to with family, with the people around us with our church family uh, and even to those in the community we're called to be available available to the lord uh, empowered by him filled by his spirit so that we can be available and be a servant to other people like jesus came to serve as he says i came not to be served but to serve and to give my life servant and savior and uh not that we are people's savior but rather we are people's servant if we're going to walk in the footsteps of Christ. And, and I believe it begins with family as much as possible. I, I realize our schedules are sometimes a little difficult and we have challenges, but when we can make ourselves available, uh, and sometimes we have to go the extra mile to do so, that we will seek to be a servant for other people because Christ was and is a servant for us. And that sacrificial love is what sometimes is missing in our culture today. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, selfishness uh, with the political arena, with uh, some of the social things that are going on. Uh, and even amidst the COVID, uh, how people have sometimes turned in and, uh, and have forgotten about our call to serve. There's a balance to be found. Uh, we do need to be cautious and careful and take care of ourselves. Uh, we don't need to be strident when it comes to certain issues uh, in the political realm or in our culture. But we do need to be a witness and we do need to, to serve and we do need to love and we do need to be uh, Christ's instruments, our hands, our mouths, our hearts, and also proclaiming his word amidst all the challenges that we see around us. It's not always easy and finding uh, the balance and finding the time to do all that we're called to do. And busyness comes and goes. But our priorities need to stay constant. Our priority to be uh, available to the Lord and available to other people. Let's pray. Lord God, we praise you and thank you for the gift of Ash Wednesday, for the gift of Lent, for the blessing that we are called to be uh, to you and for each other. And Lord, I pray now that you would just help us in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives to focus on you as the call is in Lent to return and, and to reevaluate our priorities, our use of time, our hearts and our minds and our attitudes towards others. Help us to be your vessel, your instrument, and to be your servant uh, and a servant for the sake of others. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.